All right, let's take our Bible and go to Colossians chapter 3, book of Colossians chapter 3. And we'll look at verse 8. And you get verse 8. I'll take a look now and read it. It says, uh, But now ye also put off all of these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with, with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed, and knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. But put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Uh, There's an admonition there, uh, instructing the church at Colossae how they ought to behave as Christians. And he lays out a pretty good little list there of some do's and don'ts, some positives and negatives, and uh, gives good instruction for the Christian and how they ought to aim themselves at those things. Let's uh, bow our heads for prayers tonight. Lord God, come to you now, as always, and ask you to please come in thy spirit. I pray, God, that you fill me with thy spirit. Help my thoughts and my words. Um, make the words of truth plain to these that have come to hear them. And I pray, God, you'd be pleased with the efforts. And I pray, God, that your people would get good instruction from your word. I pray they take heed as they would if somebody was going to give them some money. They might take heed to the gifts that you offer. Now, we don't just read them like we read some other book, but we take these as instruction strictly from you. And I pray it be something that benefits the, the people tonight and gives them good direction, gives them good path to follow, some things to put in their lives that will help them uh, be exemplary as Christians. And, Lord, I thank you for these things. I pray now that you bless the, the lesson tonight. We ask it in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, I was years ago talking with Brother Dave Spurgeon. He used to be in the outlaw motorcycle gang. And those guys were just thugs. They were cutthroat, dope-headed, just, just fighting, just bad boys. And uh, if you wanted to be an outlaw, if somebody wanted to be one of those guys, you didn't just say, hey, uh, I'd like to be part of your club. And they say, fine, but you have to understand what we're, what we're about. Uh, if you can't go by these principles that we have, and we don't want you, we, if you're going to be part of this club, you have to match our ideals and what we, what we say makes a good outlaw. Amen. And, uh, and they call them prospects, and they got to go through a whole, a whole bunch of things to see if they can uh, hold up to the level of uh, ex expectations that each member has. And uh, if, you were to be, uh, if you were to be on a pro football team, you would sign a contract to be on that team, and you would have to say, I pledge, not, I, I pledge that I will not take drugs. I will not be a, a professional athlete on drugs. And there's a lot of little, little promises they have to make. you got to make sure and be at all the practices. We understand you being sick once in a while, but a couple times, to you know, you can't be one of us unless you follow all these rules and expectations we have. 
It doesn't really matter what the club is. It could be the Dallas Cheerleaders. It could be, it could be Kiwanis Club. It could be any number of things that people uh, uh, want to be a part of. And there are rules and regulations and things that the the head the head of those those places would expect from all their members. And that's kind of what the Lord has done here. Uh, I can remember reading some books about Ellis Island and how uh, immigrants would come from foreign lands and they would come in and they'd say, all right, now, if you're going to be a U.S. citizen, you got to pledge allegiance to our flag. you got to this, 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 and you got a whole bunch of rules. And they have to say, Yes, I will pledge. All right, raise your right hand, put your hand on the Bible, and you, pledge, you make the pledge that you're going to do the best you can to be a U.S. citizen. These are, this is what a U.S. citizen, this is what we expect out of U.S. citizens. Since you're going to be one, we're expecting you to be this way. So God is like that. Uh, the good part about the Lord, if you fail, uh, he'll stay with you. If you fail in the outlaw, they'll kick you out. <laughs> If you fail on the football team, they'll kick you out. Hey Amen. You show up drugging your in your. I know a friend of mine got. He was he was going to be a second string quarterback for the 49ers. It was his life dream, and he made the team. He had the contract, and went out and smoked a little weed one night at one of the parties and tested dirty. They called him in. I could give you his name. Some of you know him. Uh, they come in there and they, he says, "Yeah, what you calling me in here for?" It said, this is the contract. You signed it right here. You said this, this, and this. We understand. Uh, we just t tested all the players. You tested dirty. They tore that contract up right in front of him, threw it in the trash can, and said, adios, buddy. You're out. <laughs> you violated your contract. You're, you're out. <laughs> and thank God God doesn't do that if we don't hold up the line as good Christians. He don't do that. He says, well, let's try again. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's look at this first one we looked at in verse number 8. And it says, but now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. And so what if I was to stand you up right now and say, raise your right hand. Uh, I want you to pledge. I want you, I do solemnly plan. <laughs> I don't, I don't all solemnly swear. I do solemnly plan. Uh, I do solemnly plan to uh, uh, give in to being, uh, I'm not going to be mad at folks. What do you say there? Uh, put off all these. Anger. All right, Lord, I, I do solemnly plan uh, not to get mad at folks. That's pretty tough. So when that anger starts coming in, you go, oh, wait a minute. Now, I said I wouldn't do that. Uh, going to hold you to it, see, I'll hold you to it. So if I was to stand you up here, this is what God wants out of us. And, and I'm not saying I'm going to be successful at it. I'll probably get mad once in a while. But when I do, I know I did wrong. And the next time I'll try harder not to do it again. All right, he says, but now ye also put off all these, anger. You want to plan. I want everybody here to think about that. I plan not to get angry at my brother. I might get angry at the devil. I might get angry over evil, but, but not in the church, not, in, not for good. He says, put off all these, anger, wrath. I'm not going to hit anybody. The Bible talks about pouring wrath out. That means you, you took, you took <laughs> physical, <laughs> you got, amen. I had a guy in my office, that Doc was there. He, he threatened to beat up on me. And, uh. I was kind of hoping he would try, but he didn't, and uh, I put him out. And uh, the Bible says, uh, no wrath, you don't, you don't get to. Uh, malice, same kind of stuff. Blasphemy, that's using the Lord's name in vain. Like that movie we saw the other night, that guy, stop the show, stop the show, that guy blasphemed. <laughs> Boy, the type, times have sure changed, haven't they? Uh, but uh, I do solemnly plan. Uh, never to blaspheme the Lord's name, ever, ever, ever. As a Christian, I'm not going to ever do it. That's not hard to do, is it? No. And, I, and I can aim myself at that, I'm, and I, I can do that. Uh, filthy communications out of your mouth. I do solemnly plan. Not talk bad about anybody no more. Done with it. I'm all through with it. I'm not going to talk filthy. I'm not going to be a liar. Amen? Uh, what's the, what do you say there? Filthy communication. I'm not going to tell bad jokes. Or dirty jokes, I should say. I'm not going to tell them. Amen. And sometimes that's hard to do. 
not tell a dirty joke. I've heard some dirty jokes that are hilarious, but I've never got to tell one. <laughs> Once I became a Christian, I, could, I remember working in the West Florida Hospital when I was in Bible school, and we're down there digging ditches, and they're, they, 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 were, they were pouring footings for the hospital, and it was going to go, I don't know how many floors, what is it, four or five floors up. But this footing was from that wall to here, and from that wall out about the same, big square, and it was eight feet deep. And we're in there digging that thing out. The backhoe dug it all out. We were squaring it up with shovels and stuff. And this guy, he's a lost guy. You know, he says, hey, man, I tell you the joke, and he told me the joke. It was the funniest, one of the funniest jokes ever. I never got to tell anybody. <laughs> it's a dirty joke. It's a horrible joke. I'd never, as a Christian, it, didn't, it doesn't belong in my mouth. And it doesn't belong in your mouth. Because uh, bad stuff in your mouth, a Christian puts a bad mark on Christianity. So God says, man, these are my children. These are my boys and girls. And I love them. And I want them to behave a certain way. And if they got filthy stuff coming out of their mouth, they won't look any different than anybody else out there. And they look just like the devil's kids. And I want my kids to be different from the devil's kids. So he says, uh, keep all. So I pledge, I pledge tonight. Uh, that I, I plan, uh, I do solemnly plan to keep all filthy communication out of my mouth. Verse number 9, lie not one to another. We're going to mention that. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. That old man was a liar, wasn't he? The old man was the way he used to be before he got saved. Amen. And he was an old liar. Amen. And he was always looking out for himself. And the Christian, he, he didn't do it, do it that way. And, uh, and so uh, I do solemnly plan uh, to not lie. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that's going to be hard to do. Well, I just won't say nothing then. <laughs> you don't have to make me. You can't make me talk. <laughs> you torture me. <laughs> I'll burn you. <laughs> make me talk. Amen. But I, I won't lie. Uh, lying, uh, the Bible says that Satan's the father of lies. So every time you utter one, you just obeyed your uh, father of lies. Amen. Uh, verse 10, it says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And that renewed is an interesting word there. It has to do with the Holy Ghost coming into your soul at salvation, making you a new man. And when you were a little baby, you were, a, you were an innocent little child. And the Holy Spirit of God was in your soul. You were holy and pure without sin. And when the law came and the understanding of the law came, sin revived and the Holy Ghost said, see you later. And rendered your soul dead in trespasses and sins. And when you got saved, the Bible says that you got regenerated and renewing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. And here's another verse that says, renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So the image, of course, is Christ, and we're, uh, we're getting the knowledge of what he's like. And that's what we're reading about, knowledge of what he's like. All right, verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And verse 11 says, I plan uh, to uh, change the way I was and to continue to to learn about Jesus Christ, and uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not racist. I'm not a racist. I'm not going to think any race is any better than the next race. I'm a Christian. And if this guy's a Chinese Christian, he's my brother. And if that guy's a black Christian, he's my brother. And if that guy's a whatever, a Mongolian Christian, he's my brother. And uh, all the ground at the cross is level. Yes, Amen. And all the racist stuff, I, I like going to the jail. You get to the jail, you got everybody in there. <laughs> Except the Chinese. They just, the Orientals ain't there. They, they are, they are law-abiding citizens. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, yeah. I, I'm telling you from firsthand experience, bro. I go there every month. I tell you firsthand experience. I'll see an Oriental guy in there maybe two times a year. A year. And I preached to probably no less than 600 men in a year, I would guess. About 600 men a year, I would guess. Because it varies. Sometimes 20 will come in, sometimes 10 will come in, sometimes 1 will come in. Uh, but I preach to those guys, and I'll see lots of black guys. I'll see lots of Mexican guys. i see a handful of white guys. And i see almost no Oriental guys. They just don't break the law. <laughs> 
If they do, it's, it's rare. <laughs> I don't say they're, you know, I, I know they got Oriental gangs, Chinese gangs and stuff. Some of them rough, rough. I understand all that stuff. But, but as a, when you go to that jail, you're, you're getting out of all the whole L.A. area. And you get two Orientals in a, in a whole year, they're, they're just law-abiding citizens. <laughs> That's all I can say. Amen. But, uh, uh, but he, he says there, as a Christian, uh, we are to be, uh, all of us are to be brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're to look at it that way. And that's what he's talking about when he gets down there in verse 11. And he talks about uh, uh, there ain't no racial uh, separations. Uh, Christ is in those guys. It says Christ is in all. Right? Right? And, and in all, it says. Is all and in all. All right? Verse number 12. Uh, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Notice your elect. Uh, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. And he said to put that on. You know how you put a coat on? You, you put a blouse on. You put your pants on. You put on that. And uh, the Bible says right there that this is what, uh, this is what God likes out of all his children. And stand up there, raise your hand, put your, uh, raise your left hand, and put your right hand on the Bible, and say, I do uh, solemnly plan uh, to be a humble man, <laughs> uh, to be, uh, uh, to be uh, what does it say there, um, uh, 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 mercies. I plan to be merciful. What is that? That means let it go. You say, well, well that brother over there, he did me bad. Let it go. Let it go. Pray for the brother. Uh, go do something nice to him. He coals a fire on his head. <laughs> Amen. And, and uh, the Bible says be merciful. One thing I notice about Christians, a lot of them don't do this one very well. Be merciful. Uh, wasn't Christ merciful to you? Amen. Well, he says, my ch- I want all my children to be merciful. I'm merciful to them, and some of them are real scallywags. <laughs> some of them, no count at all. Some of them just boogers. But I'm merciful to all of them because I want, I want to get what they got. I want to get some, whatever they have that's good. I want to get that out of them. And if, uh, if I'm going to be merciful to you, I'm going to not look too kind on you if you can't be merciful. When you got mercy, uh, you liked it when you got it. Yes, well, how come you don't like it when you give it, when you, to give it out? <laughs> Amen. So he says there, uh, holy beloved of God, bowels of mercies and kindness. As, uh, uh, that's a nice word. I like that word. Honey, didn't you do something on kindness to one of the ladies not too long ago? Had a little... I thought you said you was going to give them a little lesson on kindness. Yeah. And you know what that is. That's, uh, that's self-explanatory. Uh, be nice to folks. Uh, that, puts, uh, that makes a Christian look good, doesn't it? He's kind. I know some guys like that. I know some big old tough Christians that are kind. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a good testimony for kindness. And some people, the opposite of that word is mean. You ever see a mean Christian? Yeah, there's a few of them out there. The Bible says, I don't, I don't want you to be a mean one. I want you to stand up. You want to be a U.S. citizen, you plan to do. If you want to be a Christian, you plan to do these things. Yeah, I think I'm going to try real hard from now on to show mercy. I'm going to try real hard. This is brand new for me. I'm going to start all fresh today. Start all fresh today. I'm going to, I plan to be merciful, and I plan to be kind. I'm going to do the best I can. And if I mess up, the good thing about it is you'll be merciful to me. And you'll be kind to me. And let me get through my meanness. You ever see somebody get up on the wrong side of the bed? Sometimes they have no reason at all to be mean. They just feel like being mean. I, like, I get like that every once in a while. I just get up sometimes. I just, I don't know why. I just feel like being mean. I want to go sock somebody. I don't know why. <laughs> just feel like that. You know? You know how I get out of it? Uh, there's two ways. Uh, two, huh? Yeah, that'll, well, I ain't never tried that. She's always there. I'd have to climb over her. But, uh, uh, but I, I found this. I can get out of it this way uh, I, if I can. And I got, sometimes you can't. When you feel mean, you, can't, you don't want to go get your Bible. You have to make yourself go get your Bible. But if I start reading my Bible, the, uh, the meanness will melt off in 10 minutes. Less than that. Five minutes will be melt away. Or if I get me a plug in a Christian tape or music or start singing, it'll go right away. It'll go away. Because there's a spirit in that stuff. Yeah. I remember when David played the harp 
And Saul was being mean, wasn't he? Remember Saul? Being real mean. And, uh, and David had a soothing spirit and just drove that bad spirit off. And there's something about somebody happy in Jesus, the devil don't want to stay around. He don't like all that stuff. The devil likes all that mean stuff. And you, you start getting mean, you know where that's coming from. And then the Bible talks about being kind. And uh, he wants to see all his Christians make efforts to do what we're talking about here tonight. And uh, the Bible talks about long-suffering. You know what that is, to suffer long? That means be patient. Because it isn't fun to wait. I'm one of the worst when it comes to waiting. I, I can't stand to wait. I don't know what's wrong with me. I got something, God put something in me. Well, I won't blame him for it. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't wait very well. I want to hurry and go all the time. I'm, all, I'm just wired that way. If, if I get stuck at a red light, and don't let the train thing come down. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm ready to blow a gasket right there. I can't take it. Uh, but when it comes to the Christian, when it comes to the brethren, uh, the Bible says to be long-suffering toward them. Be patient with them. You've got to remember, some of, some of us are new in the Lord. And some of us don't know some of the things that others know. And sometimes they'll say some mean things. And they, they might not mean it the way you think they do. Uh, they, they may dress certain way that you're not used to seeing. You've you got to give them time. You've got to give them time to let God speak to their heart the way he spoke to your heart. And if you get upset with them, and you, you run them off before they get a chance. And uh, so you want to be long-suffering. You want to you give them a chance to grow. Amen. And, uh, and you, want, you want some of them to give you a little latitude as well. Because sometimes it'll be you the one that needs Amen. You're, you're the one that needs somebody to be patient towards you. Yeah, because uh, some of you are just not perfect Christians. Most of you probably not. But the Bible says here in verse 12 that uh, the, the stuff that should comes out of you. He said, talked about the bowels, the things that come out of your heart. And he says, uh, uh, he says there are uh, mercies, kindnesses, humbleness of mind, meekness. That's a good one. And the Bible talked about Moses. I think it was Moses was meeker than all the other people. He was a meek man. And yet he was the leader. And he had to have people respect him. And he had to pay, people follow his order. But he was a meek man. I remember having a boss like that one time. He was a meek man. I liked being around him. He wasn't like a lot of the other bosses. A lot of the other bosses were real stern. Man, they, and they had every right to be there. The boss, they get to run their company however they want to do it. Uh, but I don't mind working for a guy that's, that's meek. I, I, I like making him look good. I don't want to do stuff for the mean guy, standing around and watching you, hiding behind the wall, looking to see if, I don't, I don't like, I mean, you, you got me working for you. I, I think I got some level of trust there. Uh, but the Bible talks about uh, meekness. And then verse 13, forbearing one another, putting up with one another. And, uh, and that kind of goes along with that patient thing or, or that... Uh, uh, forbearance is kind of like that one. What did we see it earlier about um, where do, I don't, I'm looking for it now. I don't see it. Uh, long suffering, forbearing and long suffering, real close. Uh, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Well, that's a tough one. Forgive folks, let it go. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So you just, you just forgive. Now people say, I, I can forgive, but I can't forget. Well, if you can't forget, really in your heart, you haven't really forgiven, have you? If you're still holding the grudge, then you really haven't forgiven. Right. To forgive is to let it go. Yeah, let it go. How many times, how many times have you come to the altar over one thing? that you can't seem to get a handle on. And you tell God, I'm, bless God, I'm going to do better from now on. And within a week, you done broke that promise. And God's, God, don't, God don't smack you. He's patient. He's kind. He's merciful. He give you a chance after chance after chance after chance. And after about 1,800 tries, he'll probably thunk you. Do better. 
But he's, uh, I found my Lord, I don't know how many times I've prayed forgiveness over the same thing. Dozens of times. And never, never have to pay anything for it. I guess just the fact that he wounds my conscience maybe is payment enough, I don't know. But uh, the Bible talks about uh, forgiving one another. And uh, if any man have a quarrel against any, uh, as Christ forgave you, you forgive them. Verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Now there is, uh, I plan to be charitable as uh, God leads. As God leads me, I plan to be charitable. Charitable means I'm, I'm helpful. I'm helpful. I'm, I give of myself. I can give of my money. I help the brethren out however I can. I like that. Karen does that. She's got a job that has a haberdashery, I guess you call it, a garment thing. And wherever, they, you know, wherever she can, she'll bring them and, and give them to folks. Archie, he's a mechanic. Every once in a while, somebody break down and say, you know a mechanic? I said, call, call Arch. Archie, help him out. I'm sorry, Arch. Now they're all going to be calling you. <laughs> it's hard. When you're a church mechanic, it's tough. I mean, if, if you can get out of calling him, do that. But if you, if you got no money, you got no money and you're stuck, he'll help you. I know Archie well. He'll, he'll help you. And another thing I like about him, he would talk about being a meek man. He, he's, he's got that. He's got that. He's got that meek stuff, and that's good stuff. That meek stuff. All right. Uh, so charitable, uh, uh, the bond of perfectness, verse fifteen, and let the peace of God, uh, and uh, that peace of God, that's uh, a, a comfort that you get from God. You get peace about a thing. They say, well, I don't have peace about it. I mean, you're troubled about it. It, it, it don't look right to you. you I don't think we're going to do that. I, I, don't, I just don't know why. I just don't feel comfortable. That's not having peace. Amen. Uh, the opposite is, uh, yeah, let's go do this. And they say, well, I don't know. About I got perfect peace about this. We're going to do it. So, all right. All right, we're going to do it then. And he says, uh, if you're following the Lord and you got Bible verses to do what you want to do, you got good peace about it. And you don't have a troubled spirit about it. And he said, uh, let, let the peace of God rule. What is it to rule? That means dominate everything else. So if you got peace, run with it. Have trust in it. Faith it. Let it go. Use it. Use it. Had a preacher call me yesterday. Was it yesterday? Called me yesterday. Man, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. I said, well, brother. And I gave him that verse. I said, uh, uh, whatever God gives you peace about, you do that. And I want you to know I'll be behind you, whatever you do. Whatever call you make on this thing, I know it's hard. You're right in the middle of this thing. You're running the whole shit thing, and, uh, and all these things are happening, and it looks like, uh, it looks like either the devil's fighting or God don't want it to happen, one or two, and you, you confuse us to know which one. Uh, you, you think about your flock, and you think about your people, and you think about what's going to benefit them, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. Yeah. And if God gives you a good, clean conscience about the thing, and don't matter what the devil does, you go forward. And if it looks like God says, I don't want this to happen, then you just back off, cancel the whole thing, don't even worry about it. Just let the peace of God rule in your heart. And he said, thank you, brother. I said, that's exactly what I needed. And then we hung up. <laughs> Amen. And he says, uh, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And so you want to be thankful in all things. And the Bible says that's the will of God. You get ready to go to bed at night, thank God for the day. Thank God for the joys that you had, the food that you had, the clothes you got to wear, the roof over your head. Amen. All the nice things the Lord's blessed you with. Americans are fat, boy. Their garages are stuffed full. Their closets and refrigerators and everything's full, boy, just full. You got, you got more than heart could wish. And it's amazing we find ways to complain about stuff. We find something to complain about. You want to hear some complaining? You you come over come over when me and Jack and Doc play pool. You you'll get, you'll, you'll hear some complaining there, mostly from me, because <laughs> they beat me something horrible when we get in the pool table. Uh, but the Bible says there, uh, 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 let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be uh, ye thankful. Verse sixteen, uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another so you're not alone. And psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sounds like church going on, doesn't it? Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That sounds like church to me. 
Verse 16, we'll read this one more time. I do solemnly pledge, by the right hand on the Bible, Lord, I do solemnly swedge. I'm going to put away all anger and malice and blasphemy out of my mouth. I'm not going to lie to my brother. I'm going to forbear one another. I'm going to be merciful. I'm going to have kindness. I'm going to have long-suffering and forbearing one another and forgive others just like you forgave me. I do solemnly pledge. This is the way you want Christians to be. I'm going to try to be like that. Yeah. All these things you're talking about. Now, some of them look a little bit different. I'm going to try to do them. Yeah. Amen. Can they be done? Yeah. Well, yeah. Can you do them? Well, if anybody can do them, then you're, you're somebody. You can do it. If somebody else could do it, you could do it too. I'm, I'm, hoping, you're in, I'm hoping you're in the same mindset I am. I'm thinking right now of, of making the pledge right now. I'm serious. I plan, I plan to do all this, Lord. I'm not playing games. I'm serious. Amen. I want to be like this. I want to be the kind of Christian that you said, that you, you, you gave this little outline for, for this, these church peoples at Colossae to be just like that. Amen. Now, I want to be like that. I want to be one of them. And I'm going to strive for it. And, uh, and uh, if I mess up, and I probably will, uh, all, all the brothers that heard the message tonight will be merciful to me and forbearing with me and long-suffering with me. Amen. And they'll pray for me and they'll help me. Amen. So I ain't worried about it. I, even if I mess up, I ain't worried about it. I'm in good company. Yeah. And if you mess up, you're in good company because I'm moving the same way towards you. Drag that old rascal out of that pew. Get it out of that church. No, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to give him a chance to fix it, make it right. Give him instruction, what the Bible says, how to make it good. I don't want to cut off all the members. We walk around with no arms and no legs. That wouldn't be a very helpful person at all. I'm going to use all the fingers and toes and arms and everything, that all the members, all the members that we got, we need them all. And don't run any of them off. The only ones you want to run off is if they're going to hurt the rest of them. If they're going to hurt the rest of them, uh, then, then, then you run them off. And that don't happen too much, but every once in a while it happens. All right, the Bible says in verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So you got to come to Sunday school. Now, I know some of you don't like that, but it says, it says right there, if you're going to plan to be a good Christian and you want to live the Christian life, then you got to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. What's richly? I mean, you got a lot of money? All right, so if you, you got to get a lot of the word. That's what it says. So that means you got to come to Sunday school. Some of you don't want to do that, but to be a good Christian, it says do that. Amen. And some of you don't want to come Wednesday night. Well, it's Wednesday night. You're here, so I'm preaching to the choir. But there are Christians need to be here, can be here, should be here, need to be here. Amen. Be a good Christian. Let the, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. Amen. So those things uh, encourage each other, don't they? Admonish you. Some of them hymns you sing, man, they preach at you, don't they? Yeah, some of them preach at you. Yeah, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So I plan to do everything as a Christian and to be careful to thank God for every day and for everything for the good life I have in Jesus Christ. Amen. I plan to do everything as a Christian. Because that's what I am. Own it. Own it. Amen. When I was, uh, when I was in uh, Bible school, I was a drywall guy. My, my vocation, I guess you would say, well, I was a, a journeyman drywall guy. And if I was going to apply for something or maybe to get money or buy something on credit, they'd say, what kind of work did you do? I said, I'm a journey, dry, journeyman drywall man. I've been doing it for 18 years, whatever. Try to get establish them to give me the loan that I want. So now I'm a pastor. Now, now I'm a preacher. And I, every once in a while I get in that same situation. They said, what do you do? And I think, man, it's going to look real good if I say I'm a journeyman drywall man. <laughs> I got over 20 years as a drywall man. Make good money as a drywall man. 
Now I'm a poor preacher. <laughs> so which one do I put? I wonder if these guys like Christians. I wonder if these guys hate Christians. If I say I'm a Christian and he hates Christians, he ain't going to give me the loan. Which one should I do? <laughs> you know what I do? Own it. Own it. I be Christian. That's me. I pastor Bayview Baptist Church in San Pedro. That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Own it. Own it. That's what, that's what you are. Uh, so be one. Are you Christian? You want to live the Christian life? Then this ain't, too, this ain't a stretch for you. This is something you can do. I do solemnly plan to, to do what you said, Lord. Uh, I, everything I do, I want to do it as a Christian would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Lost people, they get to do it any way they want. They can cheat. They can be crooked. They can, they can be truthful. They can go either way they want. Christian, nope, nope. I'm one of God's children, and he wants it done this way. So I'm going to do it this way. Amen. And that's what he told the church at Colossae. And he told them, uh, you guys want to be good Christian people, and you want to bear the name of Jesus Christ without reproach? Do that. Do that. All right, let's all stand.